This is Biology 1, Chapter 12 on Molecular Genetics. In Part 1 of this lecture, we will be taking a look at the experiments that proved indefinitely that the nucleic acids, such as DNA and RNA, are indeed the genetic material of the cell. In around the 1940s, uh, there was a debate in the scientific community as to what portions of the cell contained genetic information. What portions of the cell contained the directions for making an organism, for running an organism? Was it protein that was doing this job or was it DNA that was doing this job? Um, and in the 1940s, kind of the general school of thought was it was proteins that were in charge of genetic information. However, there were several experiments performed to finally explain that it was DNA that contains the genetic information in cells. Frederick, Frederick Griffith uh, was one of the people who did the first major experiment uh, that demonstrated that more than likely DNA was the genetic material of the cell. And this is how he did this. He used a type of pneumonia virus. Now, viruses are nothing more than genetic material that's wrapped in a protein coat. That's all a virus is. It's not even technically a living particle. So what he did was he used two strains of a pneumonia virus. One strain or type was called smooth because the outside of the virus, the protein coat was smooth, it didn't have any bumps. And the rough version of the pneumonia virus, which had little lumpy, bumpy kind of uh, protein coat on the outside, so we called that the rough strain. He used mice for his experiment. Uh, once he injected the live S strain of the virus, that would always cause pneumonia in mice. Every time he injected a live R strain, the virus did not cause pneumonia in mice. So a live S strain caused illness. A live R strain did not cause illness. So what Griffith did was he took that live S strain and he heated it to the point where all of the viruses were killed and destroyed. Then he would inject it to mice and lo and behold, the mice survived and did not contract ammonia. So he started to think about what was giving the directions for causing the disease, causing pneumonia. So if the heat killed S strain, which was now harmless, and the live R strain, which was always harmless, were actually mixed together and injected into the mice, the mice became sick with pneumonia. So what he wondered was how did two harmless strains of a virus now caused pneumonia when it was mixed. His idea was that the heat killed S strain still had the information to cause the disease, but somehow it was transferred to the live R strain. And the mixing of those two then would cause the disease causing factor, would cause the mouse to get pneumonia. So he came up with this idea, kind of a, a transformation process so that his conclusion was transformation will actually change the live R strain, which was harmless, to a live S strain, which is harmful. So here's kind of a pictorial review of, of the process of this. So he injects a smooth strain of the virus, mouse dies. Next, he injected the rough strain, which is not caused disease, mouse lives. Then he heat killed that S strain and injected it into the mouse because there was more, no more disease causing factor there, the mouse lives. Once he, however, mixed those two items together, then there was this transformation process that occurred. Now he wasn't sure exactly how this happened. So as all good scientific experiments, somebody will take someone else's idea and run with it. So Oswald Avery was next in line. Uh, he experimented to see what actually was causing this transformation process. And what he concluded 
was that those rough cells, rough lumpy bumpy cells, changed to the smooth no bump cells and bringing that information of the pneumonia with it. So there was actually a shape change. So it was a transformation, not just of information, but a transformation of cell shape uh, going from rough to smooth. And that smooth form of the pneumonia virus would cause illness. This, however, wasn't exactly enough to get everybody on board the nucleic acid wagon. Um, there were still some scientists that believed that proteins uh, held the genetic information until these folks came along. Uh, Alfred Hershey and Martha Chase gave the kind of definitive proof that DNA indeed was genetic material and not protein. So what they did in order to test this is, again, they used a virus, a special virus called a bacteriophage, or sometimes it's just called a phage. And a bacteriophage is actually a virus that will infect bacteria. So bacteriums themselves can also get sick. Again, a virus is nothing more than DNA wrapped in a protein coat. So they use these little viruses to show where that information was stored, where the I'm going to infect a cell information is stored. Was it in DNA or was it in protein? So this was how they figured out which part was going to do this. They radioactively tagged the two parts of the bacteriophage. Again, viruses are nothing more than genetic material wrapped in a protein coat. Phosphorus is part of the DNA molecule, so they radioactively tagged phosphorus, and they radioactively tagged sulfur, which is a big part of proteins. And they allowed the bacteriophages to infect the bacterial cells, and what ended up inside the cells was the nucleic acids. So they concluded that DNA must provide that genetic information for a virus to reproduce and cause more viruses and cause more cells to get infected. And that proteins did not have that information because the protein coat didn't even make it inside of the cell. So here's kind of a, a picture of, of what they've done. The little alien looking like uh, ships there are the bacteriophages. The DNA is the little red squiggly line inside. Um, and the rest of the outside, the weird kind of looking body, is that protein coat. And when a virus infects the cell, basically the only directions is make more virus and, in, and infect more cells. And the information where that was, was contained in the DNA, which actually made it inside of the cell. The protein coat didn't even make it inside of the cell, so there was no information to give. Uh, this concludes part one of chapter 12 on molecular genetics.